Yo, what up? It's your boy Freddy Ferocious back at it again for another installment of the Bombing Science video tutorials. This time around, we're going to talk about the real, real fun, funky, and fresh add ons to your piece. It's the 3D, the cutbacks, the bits, the doodads, the extras, the add ons, the arrows, whatever you want to talk about. This is going to be what's really elevating to your piece to bring it from that generic straight letter to a nice big wild style. Now, what we've got behind me is the letter C. It's one of the more trickier letters that we can deal with, but it's gonna be a really, really good tutorial for you to learn on how to manipulate these more rounded edges instead of like the straight edges that we did with the letter A in the last couple tutorials. Now, behind me, we have an inverted piece. Now, if you remember from the last piece, we had the regular standard piece, which was the neutral colors and the black outline and the white highlight going over those neutral colors. In this way, we've got the dark fill, with the white outline and then the black inlines. They're no longer highlights at this point anymore because they're actually inlines, almost giving it the reverse effect than a pop from the highlight. It gives it that inset from the outline that's hot and that's white. Now also, we decided to go off the line this time instead of on the line like we normally do when we do it the other way around. But again, this is all personal preference and you can decide to do it however you want. So, you take a look here, we've got the dark purple with the white color going around it, the black inline, and they're all playing pretty well. But, unfortunately, we've got some overspray here and some drips here. But that's the beauty of spray paint. It's quick, it's fast, and it always can go over each other really, really well and really, really quickly without any problems. So if you notice little things kind of bumping up back and forth or there's little errors, we're gonna clean that up right now. So now, as you just noticed, getting in tight, I did some cutbacks. And cutbacks are really, really important for us to keep our piece clean and looking really, really fresh and crisp. Now, getting in tight, as you just did, you notice a couple of different things. I cleaned out one line, which affected another line. And I cleaned out one line, and it affected another line. Now, cutbacks can take various forms, in which case, I was cutting back on the outline, cleaning that up. But that, in turn, destroyed one of the bubbles I was looking at this bubble here, this bubble here, and that bubble there. So I just merely went over those bubbles with its original color. And in this one, you notice, it didn't cure quite long enough, so it almost seeped into it. So I just took my time, I didn't get frustrated, and I moved on to the other cutback. And then by the time I came down there, it was ready to be cleaned up and took it in one shot. Now, moving on from there, we're gonna start to get into the kind of nitty gritty of it all, doing drop shadows and 3Ds and then all the other fun stuff as well. Now when doing drop shadows, it's a lot more similar to doing highlights. It's gotta go all in one direction and that's where the light source is gonna come from. In which case, as the opposing way of doing our highlights, we're gonna put it all going from the bottom left. So that means every instance you see, should see is basically this letter in its exact same shape and size dropped down and to the left. Now let me get at it. You just saw there, I did a drop shadow on the C, all going in the opposite direction of my inline. And the inline's going sort of from the side and the right. This one is going from the left downward. Now, if you notice, I put the lines here and here, all going left over from this right side outline and left over from this left side outline, which would make it in turn the right of the left side of the drop shadow. Then I've also added rounded edges to the bottom and then sharper edges and rounded here. It's also like thinking about it, is imagine a flat, lot, flat piece of paper on, over top of a plane. You're gonna see the little shadows coming underneath and if it's close enough to the plane, it's gonna look, a, look very sharp and very contrasted. 
that's really the level that we're going for here. We've also got the contours here matching up the side, contours here matching up the side, and the sharp points matching up the sharp points on that, just giving the illusion that it's sitting like that. So, moving on from there to a more detailed and more advanced aspect, we're going to get into the 3D. Now, Normally, you could just do some cutbacks with the background color or the background primer in order to kind of move this forward. Fortunately for me, I like a thicker style and I like it to go all the way down to the bottom with a little bit more fill. So what I'm gonna do is start to go straight to the bottom, working on what I already have, and bring in a nice big 3D. So if you notice what I've done there, is I brought down the 3D really, really low to give it that extra fatness, to really bring the shape of the letter a little bit thicker and a little bit more dimension to it. Now, there's definitely aspects to it that I don't really like. So I'm gonna use my cutback theory in order to go back over these shapes and clean, all up, clean up all those lines. And that's gonna to add to our background, which we're gonna talk about in the next video. But if you notice here, I kept a smooth round line going continuously around them. The reason why I chose the letter C is that what happens oftentimes is people make the wrong decision and try to go straight down and cut back through as opposed to keeping it one continuous line. And what I mean by that is this. Now if you see here by this line, I stopped at a point and then it rounded it back out. This is incorrect if you're looking at it from a 3D perspective because you actually just want to keep it continuously round and going all the way around. If you were going to look at something from a graphic design perspective, are you ever going to see a C, an O, or the round bits of an R or a J break off and then come back down? No, they're going to have a continuous flow going directly from the letter downward and over. Now because I don't like that line, I'm going to clean it back up with my white. Now what I've just done there could be constituted as a cutback. However, I'm not cutting back the line to look like something specific. I'm actually just cutting over a line that I did poorly and that I don't want to be seen by anybody. Now, moving on from the 3D portion, we can get into a lot more various elements, including the bits and the arrows and the other different flares that seem to be added in a lot of different pieces and wild style burners that you see these days. So moving on from the 3D's blocks block portion, we can also add a lot of different funk and flavor to it that really can bring out the elements of a 3D. Similar to the way that we have a fade when we use bubbles, gradients, or various types of graphic elements or non-graphic elements in order to bring out the way that the fill looks, we can do that in a 3D as well. So let's have a little bit of fun and add some lines in our 3D. Now after I've added some of the general shapes of what I want in my 3D, this is where I'm going to implement my cutbacks again. Because if you notice, it incorrectly follows the outline color with the pink. So that means I want it to all maintain a certain level of thickness and con consistency that goes all the way through the piece. So I'm going to grab my white again, I'm going to cut it back and utilize the cut techniques that we were just talking about and even cut further into the pink to really give it that sharp and more crisp and refined look. Now with those lines there, I cleaned up all the unwanted pink and even added some extra little funk in there to give it that extra pop and that little bit extra dimension coming out of the 3D. Also if you notice, there was other different cleanups that I had to do because this was too thin or on a wrong angle. So I thickened it all up, made it a little bit straighter and even refined these a little bit more, all going in a downward direction the way it's properly supposed to go. 
And so now what we're gonna add to really make the letter really pop out and give it that extra flavor is extensions or bits and doodads. So usually with an extension, it tends to be an arm or an extension of the piece. Oftentimes we generally come from where the piece has already started and it effortlessly formates from there. So basically, if this is where your bar is gonna go, you often put an extension coming off of that piece that will go in the direction in which you so choose. That looks cool, and again, that's up to you stylistically, but makes sense to the, to the letter itself. With that being said, I'm gonna add a little arrow coming off the top of this C. It's gonna be really, really funny because technically it's not gonna make that much sense, but when you see me put it into practice, it is gonna make a little bit of sense, or actually a lot of sense. So let's take a look at me adding in this arrow, and then we'll talk about that from there. So if you noticed what I did there, is I added this really funky fresh arrow coming out of the top part of the C and extending off the rest of the C, which is why we call it an extension. This time, this time I added an arrow. Arrows are very, very classic and quite common in graffiti. You're gonna see them done by a lot of people, done all over the place, and done in a lot of different styles. Now this is just my style. You're open to doing whatever you want. Because again, this is everybody's choice. It's using their own unique flavor and style and making their piece look the way that they want. But it's also important to keep in mind, when you're adding extensions, it becomes an extension of the piece itself. Meaning that everything that is currently existing in the piece has to ex exist in the extension as well. It's important to keep in mind that everything we've been teaching you through these tutorials are not rules that are completely set in stone. They're just fundamental practices of the graffiti craft. So you don't have to feel bound by the shackles of these rules. And because we all know that rules are meant to be broken. So now after extensions, we're gonna add some bits or doodads. Bits and doodads become little elements of the piece that also give it that extra flavor from taking it from a standard letter to that little bit extra. That meaning we're gonna add in a little bit here coming out of a little doodad. And so I'm gonna add a little square spot coming out of the left side of the C and then adding a little bit coming over top of that that's rounded. It's gonna be similar to the arrow extension technique, but it's gonna be standalone. You'll see what I mean when I get to painting. So if you notice what I've done right here, is I really got in tight, I added the bit and the doodad, and then I added the 3D and what's in the 3D, similar to the way I did the arrow. Now if you notice, I went over and over the lines using the cutback techniques that we talked about until I made it just to the point where I really, really enjoyed it. Now this is always up to your own discretion, but oftentimes you can tell what's right and you can tell what's wrong. And this again, will speak volumes about how good your piece is gonna be. As I said, I went in deep, I got in my hip hop pose, my hip hop stance, right up front and personal with the lines and I noticed things that were going wrong. And I went over and over and even gave myself a chance to take a step back, give it a second to think, let it dry a little bit longer and cut back over it. And now I've got this beautiful sharp line here, taking this 3D into this other part of the 3D and then a nice sharp and pink line there coming out of the left side of the bit or the doodad. So that's a really, really, really good way of adding that extra element to your piece because it no longer just looks like a C. It almost looks like Sonic the Hedgehog running through the futuristic forest here. Now, if you notice what I've done here as well with the arrow is I didn't go overboard and didn't try to make it go completely out of the edge or out of the edge of the frame or way too big for the letter itself. 
kept it in a consistent and concise manner that seems appropriate for the size of the letter and for the size of the surface. With that being said, we oftentimes make sure that the arrow head, that being the triangle at the end of the arrow, is going in the direction that the extension is going to go. So in which case, I went to the left side of my C, I had the arrow head going on the left side of the extension. Same thing with the bit and the doodad. I had them going on the left side, the bit and the doodad filtered off on the left side as well. Again, these are all stylistic choices that aren't completely set in stone, they're just the things that make the most sense. Also, these are these beautiful things that are at our disposal that you can use on any piece where you have the time. Often we won't have this time if we're doing things illegally, but if you have the time, these are definitely things that you should be putting in and implementing into your piece to take it to that next element so when people check your stuff on the street, they're gonna think, man, that guy's real dope.